Hello everyone. Uh, good morning. Hope you all are doing great. Um, I'm Mahbub, host of today's session with the Global Leader. Uh, this is, session is actually organized by School of Entrepreneurship Development. And uh, the objective of this session is to share the journey, professional journey of an uh, individual person, of a professional, uh, to share uh, how did they start, uh, how was their student life, because uh, main, uh, the uh, main audience of this program is uh, students who are studying at university right now. And this is an awareness session uh, for them that how to, you know, like uh, to share some professional lessons, how to develop skills and how to implement those skills in their professional career and how to make themselves future ready before graduation. So today we have invited uh, this Marina Matthews. Uh, she's the founder and managing director of uh, Marina Matthews Communications. Uh, Marina, welcome to our session. Thank you for having he, uh, having me here today. Uh, can you share a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, so I'm uh, originally from Australia, as you can probably tell from my um, Australian accent. And uh, I moved, uh, I started in PR 25 years ago. So probably before many of you were born, actually. Um, so I started 25 years ago in uh, the PR um, and communications uh, industry. And about uh, 20 years ago, I moved over to the Middle East to work for um, a, uh, the national airline of Bahrain. Um, and then spent a few years over there developing um, my skills and finally moving over to Singapore, which now I think that was probably 18 years ago, um, moved to Singapore and uh, essentially within six months of moving here, I set up my own PR agency. Um, six years later, I sold that, or rather the business was acquired, uh, went to work for someone else for a while and then restarted my own business again. So um, have been essentially been an entrepreneur for 15 plus years. That's amazing. And uh, we also try to, you know, like uh, promote and um, entrepreneurship in Bangladesh because, you know, like being one of the key factors of uh, economics, uh, you know, land, labor, um, capital and entrepreneurship. It's, uh, you know, like it's there are uh, huge opportunities for entrepreneurs in Bangladesh. So we try to promote them. We try to, you know, like promote entrepreneurial uh, spirit among students. So we are going to learn a lot of things from you. So how did you start your, like you said, uh, in PR, you started your career in PR. So when, after mm. graduation, when you started your professional career, how was it? Uh, did you find any yeah. gap, the uh, thing that you studied in the university and the thing that you uh, were doing as a professional in the beginning? Uh, interesting because um, I actually uh, um, studied business and um, no, there was no, um back then there was no uh specific subject on um, pr or communications and um i was working in the recruitment space in the recruit um, as a consultant as a junior consultant and uh, a job had come up for um, a training manager so i actually um put my hand up for it so even though the job uh wasn't asked to me um but what i did do was you know um ask if i could take on the job as as, as a training manager because i just felt that cons recruitment consulting wasn't really my thing and i'd only only been there a few months already um so i did that for about six months and then there was another uh role in uh, marketing and pr and i put my hand up for that even though i'd had no um marketing and PR experience. And uh, they moved me across again. So I changed roles within the same organization. And then as soon, soon as I started in that position, I thought, well, it's a, it's wonderful to have, you know, um, on the job learning, uh, learning experience, but I don't understand the, the theoretical aspect. And I really don't have, you know, the foundational skills that I need to do my job well. So I actually studied um, PR and marketing part time whilst um, working full time. So 
I had my day job um, as a PR and marketing consultant. And then um, uh, in the evenings, I would go to college and um, I eventually got my um, diploma in PR. So, yeah, very, um, a very different route. But I think the the lesson that I learned out of that was, you know, um, put your hand up for anything and everything that you want. I mean, the worst somebody can say is no. Um, but if there are opportunities out there, why wouldn't you try and, you know, go for them? Definitely. And this is very important. The thing that you have mentioned uh, that you you studied uh, the things that you are doing. This is, you know, this actually shows the passion and effort and dedication towards uh, what you did during that time. And, you know, like uh, sometimes some, um, you know, like professional feel that uh, when they start working for a company, that's it. Everything is taken care by them. They don't have to develop any skills. They will just, uh, mm-hmm. you know, like retire from their job and they'll just go to the work and do their tasks and just come back home and that's it. But, you know, like uh, feeling the urge of developing themselves and, you know, like uh, making them efficient for the company, for the, you know, like upper roles or, you know, like to make themselves competitive for the companies, they should study and develop some professional skills. This is very important. And uh, this is very relatable when you when you mentioned that you, uh, you, you studied or part time regarding, you know, like PR marketing to equip yourself with more information and knowledge. This is a very, very important note for students and professionals especially and uh, why it is important to you know uh, the uh, why peer is very important for any organization uh, if you uh, shed some light on that that would be really helpful sure um ultimately it comes down to awareness and you know um so a business can't grow without growth um in the bottom line and um, how do you grow the bottom line? So uh, obviously there are a number of ways um, and that's where awareness contributes a great deal. The more people that know about your business, the more customers or clients you have um, and the more people that believe in your business. So PR really is around building trust for your brand and business. And um, essentially if, if, if you don't have customers or clients, then, you know, how is it that you'll be able to grow your business? So PR and marketing is a very, very important part um, of um, helping build that awareness, but also that credibility, um, that trust. Uh, also, if you look at, you know, um, uh, media coverage of brands and businesses, you know, um, when you read about them or hear about them um, on the news, then um going beyond that awareness stage, it really builds trust because you're getting that third party endorsement, um, the third party being the media outlet. So um, it's actually quite a critical component of um, actually manage a bit, managing a business. Great. And so for example, like uh, students who want to explore their career uh, in peer, uh what are the skills necessary or uh, things they should know if they want to explore the career in pr uh as professional so if you shed some light on light on you know like the, some basic or skills that are required for them and they should uh, you know like uh, have before exploring that sector um i i Look at it from two angles, um, one being uh, the personal um, uh, skills and then the other being professional. Um, I think from a personal standpoint, it really is about um, having curiosity. And the reason why I've been in this business for so long and love it so much is really because I'm learning every day and and I'm learning from my clients, I'm learning about their businesses, I'm learning about their industries, I'm learning about their competitors, I'm learning about their audiences. So um, it's it's a continual le- learning journey. So 
because of the nature of this role, you really must uh, um, have a, a curious um, uh, nature yourself and, a th you know, that you're willing to learn. And I think also from a person, uh, another personal attribute would be, um, would be um, having thick skin. And what I mean by that is um, there is um, the downside when it comes to PR because, and what I mean by that is, you know, you're often rejected. And, you know, if you're pitching in stories to media, um, you know, you're not always gonna get a win. You're not always going to get that publicity and, uh, and press coverage. So, but the thing really think, a really important thing to know is that um, you don't need to take it personally, you know, it's part and parcel of um, of what we do. So um, I think from a personal standpoint, you know, curiosity and thick skin um, uh, are important. And then on the professional side, um, the number one thing I would say is the ability to write and to write well. So if you can prove um, to your future em em employer, your ability to to write um, that will bode well in any uh, job applications. So, if we were to go down a little a bit further, you know, how do you prove that? How do you prove prove that to a potential employer? And that would be, you know, um, through the use of um, professional sites like LinkedIn, for example. Um, so, you know, if you're um, on LinkedIn, and I highly re recommend you are if you're not already, it's a professional um, network and use that opportunity to share your thoughts, um, to share the work, uh, what you're working on, what you're studying on, what your opinion is on a particular subject um, that you may be doing an assignment on, for example. So um, what we... Uh, as employees will definitely do is seek out um, your LinkedIn profile and look at that. So it's incredibly important to keep that up to date. Um, but beyond the, the basics, um, if you're in PR, it would really um, be helpful if you're able to showcase your ability to write. And I think on that note, with the um, advent of AI um, that can help you. And my only, um, I guess, word of advice regarding um, AI is don't use it to write the content for you. Use it to tweak and slightly edit what you've written because you still need to maintain, you know, um, your tone of voice and style of writing. Yep. Sorry, it's, uh, it's disconnected for a second. Um, so just use it, uh, use, you know, AI to help you not to do the work for you because it's really important to have a point of view and have that come across um, in, in your writing. So um, another thing I would do as well to, to showcase your writing, reach out to publications and offer to write write for them um, without, for free, you know, um, if you can get your work published in any media outlet and start to build a portfolio that you present to your potential employer, I can tell you, you'll definitely get a job in PR or marketing. Great. And um, you had experience in different um, industry. I mean, um, you also managed a division of uh, the airlines global marketing, like you worked in uh, Gulf Air, right? Correct, yeah. So, uh, what was your tasks as a like visual uh, communications manager? I mean, uh, you know, like uh, you overseen that uh, division and how was it working in a uh, different industry and the importance or the impact of that uh, position uh, in the business, if you share. Yeah, um, well, as the visual communications manager, it's just a, a fancy word for a brand 
manager, so um, looking after the overall look and feel of the brand. So everything from um, the logos, the designs, the even um, the logo placement on the actual aircraft to um, uh, any other branding that's used in events. So I, I um, so similar to what I was saying earlier about putting my hand up for things, I um, initially started off as the visual communications manager and my sole job was to manage a team of 15 staff, um, including website designers, graphic designers um, who were you know, um, uh, creating um, the brand look of um, the airline. However, um, I again put my hand up <laughs> and uh, offered to um, write the content for the website. So, I mean, this was a number of years ago, but um, I ended up not only writing all the content for for the company airline uh, for the airline, but also for uh, the company intranet as well so all the material found for um, um, you know the 6,000 employees at the time um, all that information I had written all, all the content there um, I also put my hand up to um, submit awards because my role was more marketing focused on the brand side but I didn't want to lose my skills my PR skills and my writing skills so um, I offered to uh, work on the award submissions and normally somebody else in in the marketing division would do that but because um, I had my brand team and then I was able to write the content I thought it'd be great to combine those two um, and bring them together. So we won a lot of a lot of awards over those few years um, because of you know uh, the creativity involved. Instead of simply writing up a submission, a word document, um, I would go to the extent of things like a creating like a, a acrylic phone box for the call center of the year awards, for example, and creating a storybook. Um, that was placed inside. So um, my CEO, who had a marketing background, um, really appreciated and valued um, the creativity and um, the things that I'd brought to, to the table. So I was really lucky that he allowed me to do a lot more um, than just, you know, the visual branding. So it was the award submissions. It was uh, the events. I ended up doing over 100 events in my last nine months with the company. So events were a big part of it. Um, events definitely come under PR, but also, you know, um, come under marketing. So there's a lot of crossover um, between the two. Um, and yeah, it was just a, a really amazing time um, living and working over there and um, the ability to travel around the world. Great. And, uh, you know, like, uh... Uh, can you share uh, how important it is to have a mentor like for students or for professionals and how you see it, the mentorship for students and professionals? Yeah, I would say incredibly important. Um, and, you know, it, in the sense that it, I would look with um, outside of your um, immediate family, you know, I would look at, you know, perhaps it, um, it's a professor at university or um, professor at another university. It doesn't have to be at this, the same one. Um, and I think go, just going back to LinkedIn, um, this is where you, you know, you can do some outreach and, you know, contact individuals that, you know, um, that you admire and ask uh, for their mentorship. Um, I My mentor was actually... Uh, the CFO of a PR agency that I um, ended up working with uh, when I was first starting out. And um, he went on to do some amazing, amazing things. But, um, you know, and when I say mentorship, I'm not talking about, you know, you're on, you're talking to them every single week about every single issue. Um, you know, it's, maybe every couple of months, every quarter, once a quarter, you catch up and, you know, you, you discuss what's coming up for for the next quarter, um, what's coming up, you know. Um, so so that way you, there's a, a, a short runway in terms of um, focusing on what where you need to move now versus 
of course there's you know the long-term goal and what you want to achieve but um you know it's easy to take action when something is you know a shorter period of space of time great and uh, you know like what excites you uh, about the peer industry um learning every day you know i'm really am i'm constantly learning i'm learning from my team you know um who are obviously younger than myself you know um particularly from a social media standpoint because um they're very very up to date and current um in in that area um but also yeah just you know learning about different industries i find that so fascinating i mean i we have a uh, air cargo client that we've been working for the last two years and i didn't know a single thing two years ago um about air cargo but now nowadays you can pretty much ask me anything so um yeah it, it's it's interesting because pr and marketing affects every single industry so if you're really passionate about beauty for example there's pr and marketing involved you know if you're really passionate about recruitment there's PR and marketing involved. It doesn't matter what industry um, that you really love and um, you know want to build a career in, um, but you can do that in PR and marketing. It's it it transverses every single industry in the world, and that's what what I find so amazing and uh, incredible. Great. So you also work um, as a managing director for different organizations. And then you started your own um, company. So before that, um, I would like to know that, which is very interesting. You uh, you were in uh, you are in the board member of Sing Lit Station. It seems Correct. so interesting. Can you share a little uh, 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 briefly about your role here and how uh, what mm -hmm. what does this organization do in general? Sure. So Singlet Station um, is a, 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 a not-for-profit organization here in Singapore, which is focused on the uh, uh, literary community in Singapore, hence the abbreviation to Singlet, obviously standing for Singapore, uh, Singaporean literature. Um, and the way this came about is I've always been interested in trying to give back and, you know, um, figuring out a way how can I help others, you know, if not financially, then if there if there's some, some other way that I can contribute. And I spent about a year, I think it was at least a year, looking for um, the right um, charitable organisation that I wanted to work with. And um, I was getting monthly updates through another organisation that um, pairs you with uh, non-profits and charities. And every month I would get, you know, an update and mm, no, none of those um, organisations seem very interesting to me. Um, um, and then, yeah, it was about a year later, um, I, I, I saw the position for... Um, uh singlet station and um yeah they you know we met up interviewed um and because it was uh, very very new at the time um i essentially became uh one of the founding um uh um board members so yeah and it's been about seven years since and it's fantastic and i do want to say that this is a uh, non-paid um uh, board membership role and you know as you progress in your career I um, I really recommend you looking for things that you can support and partner with whether or not um, they're their um, paid roles and I say that because you can actually provide a lot of value and it just also adds a lot of credibility to you know your cv to your linkedin profile um so i would i would be looking out and seeking um opportunities there as well and you might think you know board membership roles are only for old people they're not i can tell you the other board members um are, are quite young um 
you know, uh, some of them are un under the age of 30. So don't, um, don't limit your thinking or, um, you know, slow down your, um, your path and growth just because you think something might not work. Just go out there and just do it. Just do it like the Nike logo. And this is a very powerful message um, that, you know, like people, like, uh, you know, like I mentioned before, they think like um, comfortable lives, they put themselves, mo most of the people or professionals, they put themselves in the comfortable zone. But, you know, like the thing that you mentioned is, you know, like uh, you, you, you know, like contribute your time and expertise, uh, you know, non paid role, like, you know, volunteering activities. Yeah. Apart from your work, it takes a huge effort, you know, like from your time, from your work, you know, like everything. So it's very, and also it is important that uh, community or the society or a country or maybe, uh, you know, like all the countries in the world need your help, need your support, need your assistance. This is very important that uh, here I also try to do that. A lot of people are doing it. So this platform, School of Contribution Development, is creating the ground for it that anyone, like, say, for example, sitting in Singapore, somewhere in Singapore, uh, you're contributing through your time and expertise and through your message and information to, you know, like equip students with information and giving, showing them the way how, you know, like they can, they should think or they should decide or think about their career. This is very important that, you know, like uh, sharing information that you have learned, sharing experiences that you have gathered so far through your work. It's very important. And sharing is very important um, like the thing that i have seen so far uh, if i share with uh, this with you know like the focus group or the people who should know about it is very important mm. and it guide them and help them to avoid some mistakes as well so it's very important it's very good to know and it's a noble thing to do uh, now you know uh, it wasn't in your mind to be an entrepreneur or like to you never <laughs> never never um it's funny because i think most entrepreneurs would say that they um fall into it as a result of seeing a problem and looking to resolve it so in my case, when I moved to Singapore, I was working for um, a small brand consultancy and um, and just, you know, uh, meeting clients or potential clients, clients and talking, you know, getting to network. And that's another thing that's super important. Network, 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 network. If you ask um uh, David Foster, the famous music producer who I've spent a lot, a lot of time working with, um, he would say the number one secret to success is network, your network. It's not what you know, it's who you know. <laughs> um, so just going off the back of that, um, the, how, I, how it came about is um, I noticed in Singapore that there were a lot of large uh, PR agencies that had, um, you know, great, services you know that they provided um, um but there are also a lot of smaller agencies but there didn't seem to be any sort of mid mid size agency you know sort of something um smaller and more co cost effective for potential clients but also um you know that had the personalized feel boutique feeling of the smaller agencies um so i and I thought the other advantage that I had is because I'd spent so many years um, working for international organisations, um, I thought, well, I've hired a lot of PR agencies, I, so I really have um, an advantage in the sense that I have a understanding of what clients are looking for because I've spent a decade being the client, you know, to PR agencies. So the combination of, you know, sort of being that middle ground, you know, providing the quality services of the bigger bigger PR agencies, but with the personalised attention and service of a boutique agency, plus having um, the understanding client's expectations. I thought if I could merge those together, 
um, you know, that would be filling a gap in the market. And that's exactly um, how it came came about. Great. And uh, what are the challenges uh, that you have found so far as an entrepreneur? Mm -hmm. And if you share and how a new uh, how a newcomer in the entrepreneurial sector, in entrepreneurship uh, sector, can uh, you know like avoid you know uh, from the experience. Um, I think in have I think having systems set up um, early on that will really bode well for you. Um, really, you know, having your SOPs, your standing operating procedure, your manual, you know, often it's applied to um, you know more operational style businesses. Excuse me, my cat. Um, however. Uh, I think it, it should be applied to any sort of business. So having systems and processes is really critical because um, as the pace starts to pick up within your business, um, you won't have time to do it later down the track. So um, I think that's one of the key things, um, um, you know, having those systems and processes in place. So, you know, if you're... If you're um, running a PR business, you know, we we have um, a whole process from when we from when we um, onboard the client. So, you know, so the first step one is, you know, the client onboarding, because the more we understand um, about their business, the more we can help them. Then, you know, putting together the PR program, the publicity schedule, the um, uh, media opportunities. So there's actually an entire process in how uh, we work with clients. So it two great things about that is um, one, new team members can really hit the ground running because there's there is that process in place. Um, and two is because you know um, um, it's an internal process, we can tweak it anytime we want, you know, if we, you know, so you, you're constantly updating it, you know, if you find that, okay, this isn't working, or that isn't working, you just make those adjustments, and you'll need to make those adjustments as the business grows, in any case. Wonderful. And uh, are there any skills or um, knowledge uh, before starting uh, their own uh, venture or business? Uh, so, for example, students or professional, what are the is are there any basic skills or knowledge they should have before starting their own venture? Um, I think two two things. Um, I think one is um, some sort of financial knowledge, and what I mean by that is, you know, your basic um, accounting. You know, how how would you um, what is a PL? What is a profit and loss sheet? What is a um, balance sheet? So just understanding the um, fundamental basics. And I think this will um, this will help you in not just in business, but in day to day life as well. So um, whether whether you're working for somebody or um, working for yourself, but having an understanding of um, the back-end accounting systems, I think is um, incredibly important. Um, the second thing is, you know, um, communication. And what I mean by that, just going back to the writing that I was talking about earlier, you know, um, how do you communicate? You know, um, um, I think that's, how do you communicate in a professional manner? And I would say the last thing is really understand the business you're getting into. So I would be reading up on every single thing I could, you know, um, on PR and marketing. Um, I would try and connect with every person um, that I could, you know, that, that's in, in that space. Um, so really doing your research and homework um, it's all good and well to try and, you know, solve a problem, which, you know, a um, majority of entrepreneurs, you know, are trying to do. But, you know, um, you know, get that understanding. And it's all out there. It's all accessible um, nowadays. It's not like, you know, um, when I was starting out 25 years ago, the internet had just come out, you know. Yeah. Well, maybe not 25 yeah. years ago, but not, not, not long before. So now you have, you know, um, the world at your fingertips. 
So really, really make use of that. Great. Uh, you mentioned communication. I mean, mm. sometimes people think about it so easy that uh, to develop communication skills, but it is one of the like for everyone, like students, professionals, entrepreneurs, this is a very um, powerful skill uh, yeah. to have. So can you share like uh, how students especially can de uh, develop communication skills? Um, I think it is through through reading and writing um, that will help you a lot. Um, and I can tell you from my personal experience, I became a better writer the more I read. And because you're exposing yourself to um, different styles of writing, I think that's um, that's a, a key thing. But also, um, I would I spent a lot of time um, on on YouTube as well. So tutorials, video tutorials, you know, um, on communication. So, um, you know, how how else would you? You guys have access to YouTube, so there's an abundance of things that you could find um, on online in terms of um, helping communication. I mean, the that's the that's the free version that I that I would go down versus you know um, you can you know um, uh, bring in the help of communication experts and um, mm. but I think reading will really arm you with the knowledge but also um, the vocabulary as well and that's what I find um, if you're working on an international scale your vocabulary says a lot about um, I think whether we like it or not your vocabulary does um, does send a message in terms of um, what people will think of you and what level they'll they'll think you're at. So if you can expand your vocabulary, I think that'll be a, a, a great advantage when it comes to your communication skills as well, especially if you're going wanting to go on an international level. Wonderful. That, that actually helps. And, um, you know, like... Uh, our, uh, as one of our main objectives is to aware students and uh, guide them to choose their right career path. Mm. Uh, what are the skills uh, at least they should develop before graduation to make themselves uh, future ready, according to you? Um, I wouldn't say it's a skill, or maybe it is, but um, I really would say the importance of building your network, it's, it really is critical. Um, there are more opportunities with the more people that you know, and you don't know who knows the right person that's gonna lead you down the right path. So I would say the number one thing is really try and build your network. So within your university, so within your alumni, um, then contacts their networks um, through family and friends really really build on that network um, because that's that's exactly what's going to help you great um thank you Ms. marina for you know like um sharing uh, insightful uh, information and your journey from professional to be an entrepreneur entrepreneur and this is actually very uh, like uh, positive things uh, positive thing that we would like to share with our audience that it doesn't matter whether you are a student or professional there are always you know like uh, option or there are always ways way, always a way to be an entrepreneur in any point of your life. So yeah. the main Absolutely. thing, you know, like uh, is the main thing, which is very important is to, you know, like the continuous uh, learning process, process and, you know, like uh, developing skills and the opportunities are there. It will just, uh, just a matter of time. If you like, if you just continue adventuring new avenues, 
anything can happen. So thank you so much, Ms. Peter, on behalf of um, School of Entrepreneurship Development. I would like to uh, like share my gratitude and we wish you very best of luck. And th this is a very important thing that uh, the way you have contributed your time, uh, students from Bangladesh, they will learn a lot and it will help them, you know, like uh, take decisions on different aspects. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, and um, I wish all the students the very best. And um, if I can leave you with one thing, just go and do it. Just do it. <laughs> yeah, this, this is this is it. And there are nothing to lose. So many things to learn yeah. all, uh, down the way. So thank you so much, and have a good, great thank day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day.